At Magic and Melanin, the final preparations are underway. In a few hours, the Sevilla will be welcoming around 30 Afro-Americans to the African continent. Her travel agency organizes all-inclusive travel packages to the motherland for people of African descent. She was a well-known astrologer in the US, but she decided to pack up her life and moved to Africa two years ago. Our first trip started off with nine paying participants and this trip we have 27. I was blown away to see that I even had to turn down people or put them on the wait list because we were at capacity. Yeah. Sorry we're running a bit late. No, you're All good. good. Yeah, we're I know you guys are chill. They're from the United States, they're in their mid-twenties and for the most part it's their first time to the African continent. But they've come to West Africa with an open mind. I'm really excited. I've never been. I've heard a lot of um, good things about it. I've, it's my first time in Africa, so this is all a really new experience for me. It's been very enlightening, very um, freeing, and it's been really deep and emotionally, um, but it's been necessary. Um, to reconnect with our ancestors and see the whole slave trade and coming back to it and just reconnecting with that past that we didn't really have or have never really been connected to. Until now, Afro-descendants were more familiar with English-speaking African countries due to historical and practical reasons. But French-speaking countries are becoming increasingly appealing as well. I think they're making more efforts maybe for tourism and thing. Togo and the other French speaking countries like Benin are doing a lot more. Are we ready? Yeah. All right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. After spending six days in Ghana and four in Togo, the group heads to Benin, where the scars of one of the darkest chapters in human history are still visible. For four centuries, hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children were forcibly taken from their homeland and enslaved on the American continent. For Christine, an author of African-American history books, coming to Africa was an absolute necessity. There's a lot of different smells. There's a lot of different sights that I can't get from Google. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like being here, allow, it, it adds like another layer, another texture to my writing for sure. I think it'll make it feel much more authentic. For some, the trip's been made possible thanks to a grant from a philanthropist network of the U.S. Afro-American model Ebony Davis. A dream come true for this 27-year-old who discovered part of the Vodun culture and its sacred pythons in Western Benin. Eight of the 30 travelers on the trip have benefited from the travel grant, the only condition being of African descent. I've always wanted to come to Africa, but because I never knew I was going to get here, it just was this notion that this is somewhere I can go, but I don't know how I'm going to make it. And I was able to come because of the grant. The travel package offers more than sightseeing tours to memorial sites. These young African Americans want to connect with Africans of their generation. And that means meeting young African entrepreneurs in Benin's biggest city of Cotonou. Thank you for welcoming us. Um, we really appreciate it. We love these type of exchanges and dialogues and discussions where we're really able to connect the diaspora. And I'm very happy to see this American community who have decided to come to Benin or to other African countries to reconnect with their roots. It's something that doesn't surprise me at all. And what we've seen in Togo, Ghana and Benin is a place for opportunity, a place for business. Um, you can really dive into entrepreneurship here. Business opportunities will probably have to wait a little bit longer, but the group isn't leaving Benin empty-handed. A few hours before their departure, they head to the road formerly used by hundreds of thousands of slaves. An emotional moment for Valerie, who lives in Texas. She discovered her Beninese origins thanks to a DNA test. It's very humbling to know that at least one person who walked this path survived and because of, you know, just that one person, I'm here. Silence hangs over the group as they take in the guide's every word. The majority is shocked to learn that the weakest slaves were thrown into a mass grave, like this one, alive, on top of the dead. I needed to make this walk to not only honor them, but honor myself, honor my history. Um, 
you know, my, my goal now is to focus less on the generational trauma of slavery and more on the generational resiliency. The journey ends here, a few meters from the ocean, at the door of no return for millions of Africans who were forcibly embarked on slave ships. But Magic and Melanin hopes to see more Afro-Americans embracing their origins and returning to the continent to transform their trauma into an entrepreneurial force in their motherland.